through telescopes, taken on field trips to ballets, and labeled complete geeks by our classmates. I'm sure the mental picture I'm creating is quite flattering. Property of the Borg t-shirt overstuffed book bag. Am I close? <coughs> I admit I've never been the dream date of anyone's homeroom, but it's not like I was the leading object of ridicule. My ears are pierced, both of them. This, in itself, can be offered as explanation for the astronaut's failure to put up a fight when I moved west. The first earring was a bit trendy, I admit, but in constantly looking for ways to exist outside the mainstream, I was quick to take Dub up on her offer to complete the set, which she did one night with a leather stitching needle, two ice cubes, a potato, and a bottle of hydrogen peroxide. There are those males who merely fill ear holes with tiny stones hardly big enough to offend a marine. Not me. Most days I wear big hoops. When I combine the look with a do-rag, I'm a regular pirate. I grabbed a sleeve of Lorna Dunes from the pantry and made my way upstairs to my room. Switching on the Macintosh I had received for my 13th birthday in lieu of the CD player I had requested, I sat down at my desk. Ninety minutes later, I was staring at the fireworks screensaver that kicks in after five minutes of inactivity. My one explosion of insanely brilliant creativity came in the form of a title for a story about a young bohemian relishing his first taste of life on the highway. Rhodes Scholar, a novel by Steve York. After that, little came to me. I tried to imagine my first night driving off into nowhere. Who would I meet? What would they look like? More important, what rudely formed yet priceless gems of wisdom would pass from these people of the earth to the wing-footed young traveler? I struggled with several opening sentences. I immediately deleted, with one exception, each attempt. Though it pains me to do this, I'll offer one passage describing the feel of the highway that I saved for the comic first efforts preface to the posthumously issued collected works of Steve York. He had been down roads to nowhere and alleys of sin. He had taken the high road and seen the light at the end of the tunnel, but only one stretch of pavement beckoned without respite. The one leading away from home. Another 30 minutes passed. Needing inspiration, I opened the dictionary, determined to begin my story with whatever word my finger landed on. I flipped to the middle and stabbed a page. Oviparous. Adjective. Producing eggs that hatch outside the body. Definitely time to give up. Reaching behind my Mac to switch it off, I remembered what Demoy said before I left his office. Write about what I know. I've been told that a hundred times before. Sky said I needed to tattoo it to my right hand, so I would remember it every time I picked up a pen. Science fiction, he would say, is the only genre open to you imaginationalists, a term he used to define the school of writing he said I was pioneering. If anyone knew I wouldn't have the stomach to write about spacemen, it was Sky. Luke Sky Waters was the teacher of the creative writing elective I took the year before in Houston. In a way, Sky was more responsible than the astronaut for my relocation to California. He was Dub's teacher, too. Sky had also maintained that all true writers had had their hearts broken. According to Sky's definition, I could become a writer now. My heart had been run through frappe, puree, and liquefy in a love blender. Dub had seen to that. Maybe I did have a topic capable of delivering me from summer school. I hoped Amoy would appreciate what I was about to do. In order to bypass summer school, I was set to open wounds that had never really healed. I began to type.